today we're going to be talking about why this little guy, hello mate, hiya, is unfortunately seen as an invasive alien species in the UK and even if you took it to an animal sanctuary when it was injured, they might be forced to euthanise it or put it down. Hi guys and welcome back to Animal Rights Explained. Today we're going to be talking about invasive species, which is a difficult topic, but we're going to explore why it doesn't need to be a zero-sum game and how we can ensure that the rights and welfare of our wildlife is protected at the same time as our natural environment. So what do we mean when we're talking about invasive, non-native or alien species? Well, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature defines them as animals, plants or other organisms that are introduced by humans either intentionally or accidentally into places outside of our natural range, negatively impacting native biodiversity, ecosystem services or human economies and well-being. So in short, this is either plants or animals taken by humans from their normal environment and put into a place where they're not supposed to be and they harm the environment of where they end up. Invasive species are a huge threat to our wildlife, with the International Union for the Conservation of Nature's Red List stating that one in 10 of the endangered species on that list are somehow threatened by invasive species of wildlife. A sad but continuing example of this is the story of the red and the grey squirrel in the United Kingdom. So for a long time, the UK's only native species of squirrel was a red squirrel. And it was doing really well at one point, with an estimated population total of about 3.5 million squirrels. This was until the 1870s, when someone decided that it wasn't enough for the UK to only have one colour of squirrel, and in fact, we needed more. So for the people with their grand, stately homes, who needed something to act as an ornament for the garden, the grey squirrel was imported from North America. Now, of course, these are wild animals which won't just sit around and look pretty in Downton Abbey, and after a certain amount of time, they escaped their stately grounds, moved around the country, boomed in population, and became a dominant species of wildlife. The grey escape wasn't only a disaster for the rich and landed gentry, however, but also resulted in the wiping out of many different red squirrel populations throughout the UK, where numbers plummeted to around 160,000 across the United Kingdom and only 15,000 in England, and in many parts of the country, they're regionally extinct. Grey squirrels are so harmful to their red counterparts for three key main reasons. Firstly, grey squirrels carry a disease called paropoxivirus, which does not appear to affect their health, but often is fatal for red squirrels. Secondly, grey squirrels are more likely to eat green acorns, so will decimate the main food source for red squirrels before they ripen. That's when the red squirrels actually go and eat them. And finally, red squirrels are put under pressure as they won't be able to breed as often with the presence of grey squirrels around in their local areas as well. Now, the introduction of grey squirrels isn't the only reason that our red squirrel populations have fallen in the last century. Other reasons, such as uh, road traffic accidents, the destruction of the habitat and other predators, also cause population decline. But it goes to show the threat that invasive species pose to our native wildlife. It's not just wildlife which is threatened by invasive species, but they can also pose a risk to human life and human society as well. For example, have you ever heard of Japanese knotweed? <laughs> All right, it's not quite that bad, but Japanese knotweed came into the United Kingdom in a similar way to the grey squirrel. It was introduced by humans. And on one hand, Japanese knotweed does threaten our biodiversity, but on the other, it also poses a risk to our own homes and buildings. And due to the fact it's really difficult to get rid of once it's there, and it can cause structural damage to some buildings, the problem's gotten bad to the extent that in some places, you can't actually get a mortgage on your house if it's threatened by Japanese knotweed. Grey squirrels aren't the only animals recognised as being an invasive species in the UK, and the law recognises 25 other different animal and plant species as being invasive, including the muntjac deer, the ruddy duck, the signal crayfish, and the Egyptian goose. So now we understand invasive species in the UK, let's quickly explain how the law attempts to solve a problem. The problem of invasive species is addressed in the UK under a law called the Invasive Alien Species Enforcement and Permitting Order 2019. That's too long. We're not going to be calling it that. Going forward, let's just call it the law or this law. Now, this law makes an offence for anyone to intentionally release or recklessly, and therefore unintentionally, allow to escape 
any of the invasive alien species we discussed earlier, and all of those which are listed in the schedule at the back of the law. The law also makes an offence for anyone to sell or to attempt to sell any of these species, or for anyone to try and import them into the United Kingdom. And anyone who's found guilty of any of these offences, if they're convicted, can face up to two years in prison. So on the whole, that must be correct, right? We've seen the damage done by non-native species introduced into the UK by people, and we need to have a deterrent against them being introduced. But let's work this through and apply it to a situation which might actually face people in reality. You're walking out on the street or you're in your local park and you find an unfortunate injured grey squirrel. Now you do the right thing, you take it to your local animal rescue and because they're amazing, they are able to nurse it back to good health and once it's rehabilitated, they release it back into the wild to carry on its normal life. But wait for a second, they're not allowed to do that. Remember, the law doesn't allow people to release invasive species into the wild. So unless something else intervenes, veterinary workers or people who are at an animal sanctuary who release ruddy ducks, grey squirrels, Egyptian geese, muntjac deer, who are injured and brought into their sanctuaries back into the wild could face up to two years in prison if they're convicted. The law recognises a defence and therefore legitimises situations where a person releases into the wild an invasive species, but they do so pursuant either to a permit or to a licence which has been properly granted. Now, yep, these are two different things. There's no reason why there's two different things. They could just be one thing which does the same job, but welcome to Wildlife Law. But to try and keep it simple, what this means is that people who feel that they need to be able to release invasive species back into the wild, maybe for the example we've just talked about, can apply to the relevant authorities, depending on where they are in the United Kingdom, to get the ability to be able to do that without committing a criminal offence. That's great in theory. However, unfortunately, the law doesn't really work to permit people who rescue animals from invasive species to release them back into the wild. So before the 2019 order, certain organisations such as the RSPCA had a general licence to allow them to rescue and rehabilitate certain animals from invasive species like grey squirrels or muntjac deer and then to release them back into the wild. However, with a new 2019 law, this previous licence has been replaced with a new regime which only allows animals from invasive species to be transferred into secure facilities which have been approved by the respective authority. And practically what these look like are animal sanctuaries or animal parks which are completely fenced in. These places have to be inspected and licensed by the relevant authority, which is Natural England. And that all sounds good in theory, right? However, it doesn't really work that way when we break down the cold reality of what really happens. The law in the UK doesn't really help sanctuaries in this situation for a couple of different reasons. First, because the licensing regime we just talked about only exists in England. Therefore, if you're in Wales, Scotland or Northern Ireland, there's not even the ability for you to release these rehabilitated species into secured facilities. Back to England for a second. Yes, in theory, this licensing regime allows animals to be released into secured facilities. But unfortunately, all the evidence shows that animal sanctuaries and rescues are already operating on a knife edge when it comes to their capacity and finances, with increased operating costs all the time and more and more animals being brought into them needing to be rehomed or looked after. Work by the Association for Cats and Dogs Homes shows that following this crisis, 87% of their members have had to stop rehoming animals and 71% of their member shelters have had to close access to the public. Thinking about it, it costs money, time and space for our amazing sanctuaries to take in invasive species, nurse and re rehabilitate them, to find secured facilities, which is gonna cost more rent, more space and increased operating costs as well, and to release those species there and keep them there. Now our sanctuaries and rescues are incredible, but these are resources which they simply do not have. What's the alternative then in the face of this crisis? Well, when people turn up to sanctuaries with injured invasive species, such as grey squirrels or maybe muntjac deer, unfortunately, those sanctuaries might have to just turn those people away because they don't have all the capacity and resources we've just outlined to properly look after those invasive species animals, which results in, sadly, more suffering to the animals. Or the other alternative is that maybe the most humane thing to do in that situation is that these animals are unfortunately euthanized and put down. In some cases where perhaps if there was unlimited resources and space or the law was changed, they could actually be rehabilitated back into good health. That's the hard-nosed truth of the situation. 
And maybe some of you are sat at home watching this thinking, well, we've just looked at the damage which these invasive alien species can do to our natural environment and all of our wildlife. This is the only way, an actual solution to stop that threat longer term. And I like to see myself as a realist, so I could understand that perspective. If it was the case that the UK strategy against the damage caused by alien species was actually working. The problem is, it's not, and it's getting worse. I'm going to heavily lean on these two reports by an amazing organisation called the Wildlife and Countryside Link, where they took a lot of time and expertise to examine the impact of the introduction of invasive species into the UK. Now, this video is going to briefly summarise the important points of those reports for you, but if you are interested in this kind of thing, I'm going to leave a link to those two reports in the description of this video down below. Please do go away and read about it because it is phenomenal work. These reports show that tackling invasive species is part of the UK's wider biosecurity strategy. However, the invasive species cost the United Kingdom between two to four billion pounds every year. Now, despite this, only 0.4% of that wider biosecurity strategy was actually assigned to tackling invasive species, which is around about £900,000 every year in the face of a two to four billion pound actual problem. The result of this underfunding is that in the last 20 years, 25 new invasive species have established themselves in the UK. And this represents 300% more species than from any other type of risk category within that wider biosecurity strategy. When we look at it like that, the law isn't stopping new invasive species coming into the UK, nor is it allowing humane treatment of invasive species which have already been established. Which to remind people, as animals, even if we define them as invasive, under wider UK law, they're still recognised as sentient beings capable of suffering. But more on that on another video at another time. How do we fix this? Well, to put it simply, if you want to properly solve a problem, you need to have the funding. Work done by the Wildlife and Countryside Link shows that for every one pound spent on properly tackling the problem of invasive species in the UK can save the wider UK economy 21 pounds. What a deal, right? I mean, imagine being down a pub and your mate goes to you, but I've got an investment here for you. Every pound that you give me, I guarantee I'm gonna give you 21 quid back and it's gonna better protect our natural environment. You'd snap his hand off, right? The money being talked about here is around six million pounds, which is approximately 0.0005% of total UK government spending. Part of this money could be used to make sure that animals which are brought into sanctuaries and veterinary surgeries, which are from invasive alien species, are sterilized or neutered. And studies have already proven that this can work with species such as grey squirrels through the use of oral contraceptives. And the government even looked into this more properly in 2021 itself. If this was implemented, we could change the law to allow places like rescue centres to release those invasive species back into the wild as long as they have been humanely sterilised beforehand. And this means that everybody wins. You, you don't have a resulting boom in the population of invasive species. Our native wildlife will be properly protected. And also those individual animals themselves don't need to be killed. After all, so-called invasive species didn't really invade the UK at all. Well, most of them didn't anyway. We are the ones, as humans, who brought them here. Imagine if it was a case that someone forcefully took you into their house and then they tried to kill you because they said that you're the one that caused the problems and was wrecking their house. Kind of sounds a little bit like a horror film, actually. That's it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do like the video, leave a comment down below with your favourite part and ensure you subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any amazing new content we release here at Animal Rights Explained.